So, um, as you guys see, I'm going to be talking about my mother wound. I'm typically the one that is asking all the questions, not like spilling my tea. Um, but I feel like even with my podcast, some of the conversations I've had, um, some of the ones that I've not maybe wanted to share my perspective on it. I've like had guests to come on, like, how about you come on and share your side of it? But with this, I don't have that opportunity. It's just going to be me and I'll just be spilling out my tea. So thank y'all for being here. Um, what are my disclaimers? Um, I told y'all I'm uncomfortable. Clearly I had all kinds of technical issues at the beginning of this. Um, I've got some awkward energy right now. <laughs> um, anxiety's through the roof. Uh, <laughs> What other disclaimers? Of course, and the main one though, and this is not a disclaimer, this is just the truth is, I hope each of you know, like this is something that I'm, sh this is my story that I'm sharing. And though my mother's involved, um, this is not gonna be something where you come to find me spilling some tea on like, my mother ain't is, that is not what this is, because my mother is amazing. Um, so I want to get right into it. So. Firstly, mothers are dope beyond, right? Like the way that mothers literally and figuratively create space for us, for life to bring forth life, it is incredible. And um, I, I often think of them as like supernatural creatures. Um, but even that, I don't know that it would speak to their magic because it seems like it's something other than their own strength. And I. I think that's kind of takes away from their beauty and it's no it's just them like they are just dope like that you know um and i think it is my personal opinion that every single mother does their absolute best even if their best is like setting up someone for adoption or you know some some worse things i personally believe that every single mother makes decisions that they feel are best for their children. That is my personal opinion. Um, with that though, I feel that two things can be true. Multiple things can be true at the same time. And I think that um, even with the decisions that um, moms make, thinking it's their, you know, it's the best decision, it's, it's with their best intent, they can sometimes create harm. And that is just the truth. Um, they are making their best decisions. They are doing their absolute best. They're giving their all. And also, giving their all can sometimes create um, trauma. That is just the truth. And that is my truth. Um, for the longest, I have, um, I guess, I guess been I guess silently struggle, I guess that's the word, it's sil silently struggle. And forgive me for my gum, y'all, it just helps moisture, my mouth be dry and stuff. Um, I have been silently struggling because I was the girl who had the two-parent home, raised in a upper middle class family, um, financial provision was never an issue. And from the outside looking in, it's like, you like nothing. What, what, what do you have to complain about? And if you do have some complaints, it's like some privileged complaints. It's some privileged kid stuff. It's some, um, it's just you being spoiled. It's, you know, it's all those things. And over the years, after being gaslighted year after year after year, um, I found myself kind of just being like, well, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe my experience isn't what I think it is. Maybe my perception of my own story, maybe it's wrong or flawed in some way. Um, because nobody gets it, nobody hears me. Um, but it wasn't until a few years ago where, um, I was at a conference and this girl who I've never seen in my life prophesied to me and she was like, there's this parental thing going on that God wants to heal in you. And because of the space I was in, I couldn't like react the way I felt, but I wanted to just bawl because it was the first time that I felt validated in my experience, validated in my own trauma. 
Um, and and every, everyone's thing is different, you know, like, I, I, I don't think it's healthy for anyone to compare their story, to compare their trauma. Mine wasn't physical abandonment. Mine wasn't like, y'all you know, didn't have housing or clothes. Yeah, I, I, that wasn't my thing, right? I wasn't physically abused. Um, but it is not healthy for any of us to compare our trauma because each of us have a path and each of us have to take responsibility for our own stuff. Um, so getting that validation, like prophetically, oh man, it, it was everything to me. And it gave me the freedom to pursue the healing that I've known I've needed. But you know how it is like in black families, we just be brushing stuff under the rug. We avoid a lot of stuff, you know, we normalize our dysfunction and we just, you know, we make do. We make, and we have a good time in the midst of our dysfunction. But I just personally, <laughs> I just, I'm not with it no more. I'm not with, I'm not, I'm not okay with normalized dysfunction and I'm no longer apologetic for that. I no longer apologize for not being okay with normalized dysfunction because it's dysfunction. <laughs> so, um, what is a mother wound? So there, this term is fairly new to me. I think I learned about this term maybe a few years ago. Um, so is, it isn't something that has like a very specific definition. There are several like counselors and psychologists and, and mental health like professionals who have uh, defined it on their own. But I have my own personal definition. Um, I consider it to be um, an emotional injury. I have it written down. An emotional injury caused by a deficit in the mother-child relationship that forms self-critical and codependent behaviors. Um, and... This is something that's more than like, oh, when I was a kid, my mom whooped me and I ain't like that and I don't like her. This isn't, um, I got in a big old blowout with my mom a few years ago and I just don't like her no more and I got a mother wound. This isn't that. A mother wound is something that um, that is created very, very early on and that forms the way you interact with literally everyone. It forms your self-image. It forms... Um, Honestly and truly, like the way you, the way you, your, your whole identity. Um, and I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I've always known that I didn't have the best relationship with my mother. You know, I've always known that. I've always desired it to be, you know, um, like what I thought would be best for me or what I saw other daughters have with their moms. Um, so I've always known it wasn't like uh, picture perfect, but I didn't realize the intensity of the issue or the intensity of, or, how, or the depth of the wounds that were created early on. Until um, a few years ago when I sought out therapy for the first time for some, for some other stuff, you know, I, I think you guys know, like, I, I've shared about this before on Facebook and my podcast. I've shared about my um, struggles with like depression and, and anxiety and stuff. So like I sought out therapy for like that. Um, but one thing about like starting a healing journey is like everything come up. <laughs> everything comes up. Who <laughs> job. And this began to come up, you know. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um... What I, what I began to realize was how the way I interacted with everybody was like connected to my relationship with my mama. And it blew me away because something that I thought was isolated, here it is affecting me at 25 and at 26. And, you know, and here I am like on my own. Like I haven't lived in my mama's house since I was 18. You know, it's been 12 years. So this whole time I have had these, what I thought were beautiful relationships. Um, and, and many of them have been, yet they have all had some connection to my relationship with my, um, with my mother. So it was, it's, it's been very, very layered and very, very um, challenging to confront. Um, one, because this whole concept has been new to me. And like I said earlier, emotional healing isn't something that black folks be like doing like that. So I've kind of just like been out here, fam, figuring it out as I go, you know. Um, 
but I did know this, I wanted to heal, period, period. And I figured, well, if healing is available, then maybe I can have this like fairy tale relationship with my mom that I've always wanted. Maybe I can like be besties with her like everyone else is, you know, maybe I can like have these experiences with her that all these other folks be having, you know, like I want that too, like let me heal then. How I, that, that ain't what quite happened though, but, but I'm healed though. <laughs> Anywho, um, I kind of just want to like share like the way my journey has gone and how I've gotten to where I am now, which is like a really, really, really good space. So like, okay, I'll share with you like what a mother wound is, you know, having a deficit in the mother-child relationship. Um, and maybe you're asking like, how does it show up? Like, what does it look like for me? And I think for many, um, it's it's having that feeling of not being approved of, of not being fully accepted, of feeling like some call it the black sheep, um, maybe an outcast feeling, um, knowing that you're loved, but not always feeling it, not knowing how to internalize that love you're receiving or, or receiving love in a way that you don't typically, getting love that you don't know how to receive, you know, the whole love language thing, that kind of thing. Um, being ignored not having your voice valued, um, feeling invisible, um, feeling defenseless, being accused as a child and not having a voice to defend yourself. And it's like, no way, that's not what happened or that's not what I meant or that's not. And, and feeling like, oh man, it's like, I used to have these dreams where I'd be like in a confrontation with somebody and I'd be trying to defend myself and like I'd be like screaming like he listened to me this is what it was and this is what happened and I would just be me I'd be screaming so loud and I literally have had this dream honestly up until just a few years ago this recurring dream of like and that is literally how I felt it's like I am not heard I am not seen so how can I be accepted or how can I be valued and then those things those feelings create this sense of like well like I just, why, why, like, am I even wanted here? Am I even, was I desired? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, and it's just this, like, lack of emotional connection with, with your mother. And, um, and because of those things, it created this thing where I always felt the need to be perfect. Because it's like, if I can just prove myself or perform in a way that you see, you deem me as valuable or you deem me as like acceptable, then maybe that'll um, heal this thing as a child. Um, and that's where like the perfectionism thing comes in. Um, so yeah, that's how it showed up for me. Um, if you have also experienced this, it possibly could show up differently for you. Um, but that's typically kind of how these mother wounds work. It's just that feeling of not being seen, heard, or valued. That, if I could sum it up, that's what it showed up um, in my life as a kid. So then what happens is now you have this inner child and some would call it like a, some would call it, and I think this is a good way to say it, it's like arrested development. So, and, and this is just for trauma in general. When you have gone through a traumatized, a trauma, uh, when you have gone through trauma and you don't heal it, that version of you gets stuck. So you, be, you continue to age and you continue to move on physically. You know, you grow, you have birthdays and you, you age, but you're, that inner person does not. They stay stuck. And this is what I realized that happened to me. The little girl in me never grew up. I did, but the little girl didn't. And unfortunately, this inner child of mine, <laughs> little Brit Brit, little Brit Brit, Paul thing, <laughs> Paul little baby, she has legit controlled, controlled my life, controlled my relationships, defined the way that I have interacted. Um, so these seeds planted, right? You know, this disconnect between my mother that happened over the span of, I don't know, some years has now defined the trajectory of my, the trajectory of my entire life. Um, so this now created, as an adult now, this inner child still needs the same validation, still needs the same um, attention, the same acceptance. And I think there is this, I want to look it up because I want to tell y'all the right stuff. I think it's like Maslow's or Vox, some scientist's name. 
It's the hierarchy of needs. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Hierarchy of needs. I think it's Maslow. Maslow. Maybe I got the name wrong. But it's this like really, really old um, framework of human needs. And we all have these same human needs. They look differently for all of us, uh, but they're the same basic need. Okay, of all days, you don't want to, you don't want to work today? Oh, this is why I didn't work from this phone, because my Wi-Fi wasn't on. So if y'all was on at the very beginning, y'all saw my struggle, it's because my Wi-Fi wasn't on this phone. <laughs> Child. I am technologically challenged. Okay, I found it. So this hierarchy of needs is, uh, you have your basic needs, it's, it's three sections, basic needs, psychological needs, and self-fulfillment needs. Um, if y'all can see this like little triangle thing. Um, and the, at the very, very, very basic level, you have your physiological needs where you have like food, water, warmth, and rest. So like your shelter, your house, clothes, like that, that survival, basic being alive, right? But right after that, like right after that, is safety needs, is security and safety. Security and safety. And then like belongingness and love and needs, intimate relationships, friends, that kind of thing. So it's just like, I, I think I, I, from my observation, I know that. Um, and this isn't no shade, but it's just the truth. And a lot of black families, um, parents think that providing the basic needs for survival is above and beyond. That is no shade, that is no shade, that is just my observation. That providing food, clothes, shelter, that those things is like, I've done my job, you're good. And it's like, the truth is, fam, I asked to be here. So some shelter, it, it would be nice. Like, and I don't, you know what I'm saying, I don't mean to be whatever, but I, it is what it is. It's literally the very basic need, you know. But we all have these same safety and security needs. And not feeling emotionally safe, not feeling emotionally secure, it's going to create a void. It just is. Um, so, yeah. As an adult, I found myself in these relationships. And not just romantic relationships. When I say relationships, I mean relationships, period. Like coworkers, friends, boo, like whoever, family. Every single relationship, cousins, aunts, like every single relationship. I found myself needing to be needed. I found myself needing to be perfect, needing to prove my value, needing to prove my, my worth, um, needing to prove that what I have to say is valuable, needing to prove that I know what I'm talking about, that I'm right, and you're going to know that I'm right, and then you're going to see that I'm worthy. And then when you see I'm worthy, I'm then going to know that I'm worthy, and then I'm going to have, you see how like, awful this cycle it, it, it's, it's terrible but that's how my life had been um and I think over the years people have kind of like tried to help me see certain things but depending on who it was or how I perceived it or maybe the space I was in it, it didn't all the way stick um, but there were deep rooted insecurities that came out in all of my relationships to the point why and I end up it, it so this is about trauma bonds. I, we, we, people who have unhealed trauma end up connecting with people who also have trauma. So like my trauma would seek out complementary trauma. So I would attract people, men, friends, who needed me. Something in them had some unhealed trauma that connected with my trauma to be needed. So they were needing something and I was needing to be needed. So it's like, we should be friends. Let's be friends. This works. Because like your trauma speaks my trauma and I feel like this is cool. It's not really okay. Um, it's not really like a solid covenant friendship. But we're going to act like it is because it works. Trauma bonds. And in these relationships, um, <clears throat> my worth was validated by being needed. I can, I can fulfill a need for you. I can help you in some way. Um, I can give you what I've always wanted. You know, I can give you... The validation, the attention, the whatever that I, that the little girl in me, little Brent Brent wanted. Um, and I, I do feel that I've had amazing relationships throughout my life. I do feel that way. Um, but I can also see where a lot of them, a lot of them 
um, were me operating out of a place of brokenness and operating out of a place of um, really just desiring to be accepted just as I am, not, you know, needing to perform. And um, it's the whole like transactional versus covenant relationship thing. It's like you will only... Um, you'll only like befriend me if I can prove to you that like I'm worthy of friendship or something like that. So I'm just showing y'all like how it has showed up for me, how the mother one has affected me throughout the years and how something that like happened in my childhood still affects me. Uh, uh, and even like my adulthood. Um, but like I was saying earlier about having that moment um, at that conference and having the validation of my experience. I sought out healing. And one of the first things that had to happen for me was my perspective had to change. I thought that, well, well a couple things, a couple things about my, about my perspective had to change. One, my, my perspective of God had to change. I, um, a lot of y'all probably know I'm a preacher's kid and I had, Chada has his own trauma, but that's for another day, okay? <laughs> um, uh, I think a lot of preacher's kids have difficulty in our perception of God because we are raised in a house with the person who has also been assigned to be our spiritual leader and um, the voice of God for us and all those kind of things. And things can get skewed easily and we kind of see, my, my therapist calls it um, skin gods. We a lot of times see our parents as skin gods. We had this God complex about our parents. And because of that, I was seeing God in the way that I was seeing my parents, which skewed and limited my perception and my perspective of God. So I didn't, I didn't see God as someone who was for me. And I began treating our relation. I, I had always treated our relationship, um, again, as transactional. It's like, if I do for you, you'll love me. If I serve you, you'll love me. If I obey you, you'll love me. All these things, right? But as a, a teenager or as a young adult, listen, obedience wasn't a priority. <laughs> so I find myself having these moments with God where I always feel like a nuisance or like always feel like I'm annoying God. Like I, I feel like he was like, oh, here you go again. What you want? And I'd have to like be like, okay, so let me like do this whole like repenting thing so that I can then get your good graces and then talk to you. You know, like, Lord, I'm so sorry. And like, you know, thank you so much for like still being my dad. And you know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. And then, all right, now I can like have a conversation with you, God. But like always feeling like God, the creator, was just annoyed with me. But it's going back to inner child. And, you know, those things. So I had that had to be healed first, my perspective of the creator and, and him healing that perspective for me and showing me like, girl, I love you. You minds with the S. You minds. Like, I love you, girl. And that, that part of my healing journey by itself wrecked me. It wrecked me. To know that the creator was for me, to, was for me. Like, not only is with me, but it's for me, it's rooting for me, it's, it's pleased with me just because I'm his, that wrecks me every time. And it reminds me of the scripture that talks about how God, he, he was talking about Jesus, like this is my son who I'm well pleased. And he said that well before Jesus ever went on the cross. You mean to tell me you was pleased with Jesus before he ever fulfilled his promise, before he ever fulfilled his purpose? What? And you're well pleased just because he's your son. You're well pleased just because I'm your daughter. What? It blows my mind. It bl but it blows my mind because of that trauma. It, it, it was hard for me to accept that truth because of that deep root trauma. So that was the first thing that had to change for me was my perception of God. Then um, <laughs> he had to change my perspective of what a mother wound was. And for me, it's like, okay, I got the green light to heal this thing. So healing a mother wound must mean healing my mother. Must mean it has a lot to do with her. It must mean she's got some work to do. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's her fault. So we got to get her together. So, so I had the bright, y'all, this is funny. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> I had this bright, brilliant idea. Now, mind you again. 
this like this is my 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 truth i'm figuring out as i go you know i don't have any blueprints so i'm just figuring it out so i have the bright idea oh so let me tell you this i didn't I, this i didn't tell you this part so um that conference when that lady prophesied to me she said um god is going to heal your god is going to heal this parental thing um and he's going to give you the grace to go back and fix it those were her words god is going to give you the grace to go back and fix it. I'm a very literal person. <laughs> God got to be clear, real clear with me. So I'm like, go back and fix it. I'm gonna go back home and fix it. <laughs> yeah, I had the bright idea to take my mama to therapy with me. The most awful decision. <laughs> The most awful idea I've ever had in my life. Like, I, in my mind, it was like, all right, so I don't have the, all the right words to, like, jumpstart this. And I don't, we, you know, over the years, we just have a hard time hearing each other. And I think, you, you know how this is, like, so much damage can be done that you don't hear nothing they say? They can be telling you that Jesus is Lord. You'd be like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't care nothing about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The pain is too deep. And I think over the years, it's just blockages have happened in our ears towards one another. So I'd be, what I, whatever I say, it's just not, it's not landing right and vice versa, whatever she's, it ain't landing right. So I figured, let's get a professional in here to help mediate. And you know, to, she can, the therapist can translate what I'm saying to mama and then the therapist can translate what I'm saying to me. It's going to be great. And I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I thought it would be great. Ciao. That day was the most traumatic day of that entire year. It was awful. Like, first of all, the therapist was absolutely trash. And if I remember her name, I would like report her because she was utter trash. And not because she didn't agree with me and not because she didn't say all the things I wanted her to say. She was utterly trash. And it's been validated because I had, I had, I had, to, I had to like process this for days. Like, it took me a while to process what had happened in that therapy session because you're supposed to go to therapy, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to be easy and stuff, but you're not supposed to be triggered at therapy. You're not supposed to be traumatized at the therapy session. You're not supposed to be, like, bullied at the therapy session. Like, bruh, it was so terrible. She a white lady in dope. I don't know her name, but she trash. Um, so, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to help us understand each other better, all that stuff. What I... The beauty that came out of that moment, the beauty that came out of that very traumatic day, that very, very, very traumatic day. I mean, this lady was saying some stuff that you, I wouldn't even say to like a person I was mad at. Like, you are trash. Okay, I'm getting triggered, y'all. Let me, let me roll, let me back, let me back up. The beauty of that day was God showing me, sis, this ain't about your mama. This about you. This about this about you, Allison Brittany Brown. And you have to take full responsibility of your own healing. And the one thing that this therapist gave me that was beneficial, I'll give her, I'll give credit to where credit is due. I will give honor to where honor is due. The one thing that she did for me was point me towards inner child healing. And that really is what all this is. Is healing your healing the part of you that was traumatized and allowing that person to, you know what I'm saying, like catch up with where you are in the natural. Um, which, you know, then uh gave me the the language to give to my new therapist, like, okay, I need inner child healing specifically. Like, give me inner child healing. Whatever that is, I want that. So she did give me that. Um, and that was honestly. Though it was so traumatizing, that day really shifted something for me. And it took my it took my attention off of my mother in the mother wound and put it on the wound. It put the attention on the wound because the wound is mine. You know what I'm saying? Like the wound is mine. So to heal the wound, I got to do that. I have to do that. And that was not easy to hear because it's like, I ain't put it there. But it's ours to heal. Um... Um, I was listening to Dr. Stevenson the other day and he said something like, uh, something like, 
we don't get to control what happens to us, but we do get to control how how it affects us. I be want to quote people right, but um, something like that. We I don't get to control why it happened, when it happened, what, what happened, but I do get to control how it affects me. Um, so I I had to change my perspective of like you know my mother and and, and thinking like it's your fault. You got to change. No, I can't change nobody but me, and that alone has been a thirty year journey. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a whole life journey, and will continue to be. Like I only got control of this right here, and, and even that control is limited. Um. So with that, God showed me like, fam, your mama just a woman. She just a woman. She just a woman who got married to a man, had some babies, and here you are. And she was doing her best, and she brought all of her knowledge, all of her experience, all of her wounds, all of her traumas. You know what I'm saying? She's just a woman. So changing my perspective of who God is to me, changing my perspective of what the mother wound um, was and me having to take care, you know, be, be responsible for my own healing and then changing my perspective of like who my mother is. I was like, whoa. And it was so humbling, so humbling, man. So humbling because it's like, then it's like, I, and I, I don't, I think this is pretty common. I saw my mom as mom. That was her identity to me, my mother. Um, I, you know, didn't see her as a lot of other things. You know, my mom is a first lady, so that comes with a lot of pressure to be a certain thing, you know. You've got to, y'all know how it is in the South, and, you know, you got to fit this thing. And I didn't have the opportunity to see all the layers of my mother. They weren't shown. They weren't visible to me. So to me, she was just my mama. But to have God heal that perspective and to see her as a woman, and now I can see her as, as how I see myself and all of the experiences I've had as a, just as a woman. Oh, it changes, it changes the game. It changes the game because now I'm just like, you got your own stuff to deal with. You were just figuring it out. You probably got trauma yourself that was never healed. You know what I'm saying? Because because honestly, most, I, would, I, I don't have studies to back this up, but I would put money on it that every single mother wouldn't exist because she herself has one. I put money on it. I am sure there are some studies to back it up, but this thing is generational and it will continue to be until somebody says, hey, no, nah, fam, um, I tap out. And that's me, fam. I'm dabbing out. <laughs> I, I, I can't repeat this. <clears throat> and I don't want children, but and hopefully God agrees. Um, but for my nieces, you know what I'm saying? And, and anyone connected to my lineage, I want to show them something differently, you know? Uh, so having that shift in my perspective allowed me to then step into forgiveness and forgiving, for, forgiving myself too. Um, because with such deep rooted wounds, so I don't know about y'all, but I tend to kind of be consistent with how I treat people. I don't care who you are. That whole like blood thickening and water thing. It ain't never sat right with me. Like if I don't, if we don't, how can I say this PC? I like to give people the same energy they give me. So, um, with that and with such deep-rooted wounds, you can find yourself being just, you know, dishonoring people. and dis Dishonoring my mother. I, I found myself not always honoring her and being snappy and being um, very, like, just, I was easily triggered. Um, but after this shift in my perspective, I was able to really, really walk in forgiveness. Um, forgiving myself for the disrespect, for the dishonor, for the tone, for the whatever, for the misunderstandings. And forgiving her for not knowing. She didn't know. She didn't know what I needed. How could she give me something that she didn't know I needed? Or give me something that she didn't have to give? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, when you look at it that way, it's like, oh, you good? My bad? Like, if you had it, you would have gave it, you know? You gave, you gave everything. You gave literally everything you had. You know what I'm saying? You gave me everything you had, and I'm so grateful for that. You gave me everything, and I'm so grateful. Um, 
And if and had you known, I am sure you would have given me that too. Had you known my, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm sure my mother would have given me everything I needed had she known. But she didn't know. So that allowed me to walk in forgiveness. And then this was the tricky part of, of this healing journey was grieving. Grieving something you never had, child. Grieving the fairy tale, grieving the, 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 the image or whatever you, whatever I had, whatever was in my mind, I had to grieve that because the little girl still wanted those things, even though now I've accepted it, my perspective has changed. I'm not walking in forgiveness, but I still needed the, the, the wound was still there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you stubbed my toe or you hurt me or you, you know what I'm saying, punch me, I can forgive you, but the pain still exists. You still punched me. You know what I'm saying? So I said I did with that part of it. So grieving something I never had was very difficult because again, who, who teaches you that part? There is no blueprint for that. There is no blueprint for grief. There's no blueprint for grieving, period, let alone grieving something that doesn't exist. Let alone grieving a fantasy or grieving something that you thought you deserved or wanted. Like, that was really, really tough. Having to let go. Having to let go of this thing that doesn't exist. And choosing to accept your reality. Resolving with, your, with my reality. Resolving that this is what it is. Like, this is just what it is. And then ha choosing to find the joy and beauty in that. Finding the beauty and joy in what I do have. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was, um, whew, that was really difficult. But it's so, 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 so necessary. It, ha it was so necessary for my, for my journey because it's just like, in order to make room for what I do have and what God wants to do with the relationship and all the other relationships God wants to bring me, I have to let this go. I have to. I have to. I mean, I don't have to. I can choose to sit in pain and trauma and continue being toxic. Because we don't like to talk about how we be toxic sometimes. We be the toxic ones sometimes, child. Child, I was all kinds of toxic. So, like, yeah, it's like, I got to let it go. I got to let it go. So, um... That was a really, really tricky part. Because the thing about it is the trickiest part about the forgiveness and grief is like you're forgiving. Oh, man, I just, my mentor told me this um, just recently because and she brought even further language to my experience is, you know how it is? So the 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 closest thing I can liken it to is like racism, right? You, we always talk about, like, you know, we got to forgive, we got to forgive, you know, the whites for all the things they've done. It's just like, well, how are you going to forgive somebody when they keep on doing stuff? Somebody getting shot every other week. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you have, so she told me this, you have to forgive the role of the mother. You've got to forgive the entire role because it's like, this person may not ever change. This person may still trigger you. This person may still do all these things that created the one in the first place. You have to forgive the entire role. And her telling me that it's like, that is what it was. Cause, um, cause the thing about healing is the heal healing isn't the absence of pain. Healing isn't the absence of triggers. A lot of times it's the recovery. Uh, it's, it's how quickly you recover and the, the, um, the decrease in frequency of these, you know, of these events and these experiences that cause pain. Um, cause you know, even throughout my journey, I have still been triggered. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you've got I, the, the forgiveness piece. It's like, you got to forgive it all past, present. And just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, how you want me to say it? I'm whooping you for old and new. Listen, you got to forgive the all of it for the old and the new. Just forgive all of it and move forward. Knowing that what comes at you may still make you feel away. But you've already taken care of this. You know what? You good. You good. You, good. you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's tricky, but it's just necessary. Um, and the the latter part of my healing has just been like, you know, like implementing boundaries. And 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 the beautiful the beautiful thing about this, because like I said earlier, my mother wound affected every single relationship. 
it affected how I talked to people, how I showed up in rooms and spaces, how I worked even, how I viewed my boss. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, perfectionism, y'all, perfectionism is not cute. It is not cute. It is not a badge of honor. It is a trauma response. Even working, like, never being able to say no. You know what I'm saying? Like, it helped me in a lot of ways in my career, but also, like, girl, you can ask for help, you know? My boss said anything, yep, yeah, I do it. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out because I can't say no, and you can't see me as incompetent. You can't see me as less than perfect. You know what I'm saying? Um... But healing has allowed me to put up some boundaries. You know what? Uh-uh. I actually cannot do that. Maybe later, but not today. Or not at all. You know what I'm saying? It has given me, healing has given me power to use my voice and to show up authentically and to be okay with who don't like that. Because show, showing up authentically, it's, it's, it's trendy these days, right? Like that, you know, the whole authentic thing. It's real trendy. But showing up fully, people don't be liking that, man. Because a lot of people are traumatized. And like I said earlier, those trauma bonds, people want to be connected to other people who are traumatized. When you begin to show up authentically, you start saying no. It might cost you. Um, but the beautiful thing about healing is you don't be caring. Because <laughs> you love yourself. You love yourself. I, listen, y'all. Coming into self-love has been the most radical thing ever for me. Like, it's like, this is possible. This is real? Oh my gosh. So yeah, like implementing boundaries and me being able to see the beauty in all of my relationships and, and whether romantically or just, you know, platonic friendships, being able to see how my friendships have changed, the dynamics have shifted because of my own healing has been beautiful. Because you begin to see who loves you for just you. You know what I'm saying? Like, just love you for you. I remember, I'll never forget. I think I shared, I shared this on my podcast. When I first began my healing journey, just in general, my general healing journey, because you got layers, job. I remember asking my best friend uh, from middle school, like my longest friend. Um, I remember asking her like, Tierra, why you never tell me like how trash I was? <laughs> like, you've known me since sixth grade. Why you never be like, girl, you a hot mess. And I remember her saying like, I mean, like, sure, there are, things about you that like you know like sure I, I, we see those things but like it was you like we love you like I was like really <laughs> really and to see how your relationships change as you heal to see who really is there just for you oh man it's, that alone is worth it that alone oh man like I said it's me who's changing I can't expect my mother to you know or anybody to hop on my journey, you know what I'm saying? And walk with me in this. I can't expect that. Um, so to see things just kind of shift organically and allow um, the dead weight to fall off and then allow the beautiful things to strengthen and fortify. Oh man, it's been, it's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. So that's the whole like boundaries thing. And then even like, you know, um, honoring my mother in new ways, you know, like um, it's, not, it's not all about me. What you like, you know? Um, my mom loves small talk. I hate small talk, but you know what? Today we gonna small talk. What happened in Dothan today? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you did today, girl? And um, and that's just with any relationship. Like, it's give. It, there has to be reciprocity, you know? And um, it's been cool to, you know, find new things, find, new, find out new things about her. Like, uh, she visited me earlier this year before the pandemic and y'all know like Nashville is music city and uh people think it's because of country music because it has a very he heavy emphasis of country but actually sidebar music they call it Nashville music city because of the jubilee singers from Fisk University which is a uh HBCU and back in the day they went and visited the Queen of England and she thought they sounded so amazing that she dubbed the city music city it had nothing to do with country music that's a sidebar I digress so my mom visited me and um, if you know me personally, you know, I am the itinerary queen. You come to visit me, you're going to have a whole, like, agenda. And you're going to do all of it, okay? And, we, and you're going to have fun. And uh, planning for her visit, I, you know, asked her, like, what she wanted to do, whatever. And we ended up doing some touristy stuff. And Nashville's known for the Grand, the grand Ole Opry. And uh, 
She was like, yeah, I want to do that. And I was like, you sure? Like, that's country. Like, she was like, no, I want to do it. And I was like, I mean, but it's going to be whack, though. Like, we have a lot of other stuff. That's fine. So I'm thinking, like, she ain't going to like that. Child, I come to find out she loves country music. Who knew? Like, Tony Baker. I never knew. Like, I never knew, you know. And this lady is me and her and a bunch of old white folks on this tour in the Grand Ole Opry. And it was so uncomfortable, but she loved it. I'm talking about loved every minute. And I was sitting there like, how, first of all, how you know these songs? She was so giddy. And I was like, this is really interesting. Never would have known. You know what I'm saying? So it's been cool to like learn more about her. You know what I'm saying? And find new ways to honor her and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm about to be, uh, about to be done y'all. But, uh, lastly though, one thing I've had to learn too is to just manage my expectations through healing because it's not linear. Healing isn't linear. Child, my journey been like this. It is not a straight path. And, um, like I said, healing isn't always an absence of triggers. And I've just learned, like, you got to manage that stuff, manage it in the moment. How quickly can you overcome it? And that for me is the is the beauty, is the healing. Like, you know what? All right. It came, but it didn't hit me. It came, but it didn't touch me. That kind of thing. Um, so yeah, y'all, like it's been, it has been so challenging, especially when you have, you know, family members who don't get it. Cause I didn't, I'm not the only child. I have I have siblings. Siblings who have a completely different experience with the same person. You know what I'm saying? So it's like having to to go through all of that with no one to understand and no one to like validate your experience but having to own it go through it then heal from it it's been a, a challenging experience but it's been one that has been so 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 worth it and if i never get the fairy tale mother daughter relationship that's fine because i'm healed and i'm whole and that that that's what i'm striving for you know what i'm saying like that is what i'm striving for it's for me to be in a space um of healing and wholeness so yeah that is that is like that's my story um and i i i did this uh not just to be talking but i really feel like a lot of people relate maybe it's not you maybe it's like somebody you know um <clears throat> Or, you know, maybe someone who, like, watched the replay of this. I don't know. But I just feel like a lot of people struggle with this. But there's this there's this unspoken rule that it's forbidden to say anything about your mother unless you are speaking her highest praises. It's like, you know, you dare not say certain things. But it's like, like, like I said in the beginning. Two things can be true. You can sing her highest praises and also own your story. Um, and I want to give people permission to do that. To own your story because... Living in like that numb place where you just brush stuff under the rug and you kind of just fit, you just, you just existing, you know what I'm saying? Not really fully living and fully showing up. Like that is, I just don't think that God called us to live like that. I don't, I don't think that we have, I don't think we have to live beneath our privileges as kingdom people. I'm, I'm 99% sure that everyone watching this is a believer. And I don't think that he, um, wants us to live beneath what he's promised us like he he's promised us so much and abundance is one of those and, and prosperity is one of those and i want those same things in my relationships too you know what i'm saying and um and i want my soul to prosper he wants my soul to prosper too you know my i want my emotions to be stable i i, I just think that that is available for everybody you know so that is why i'm out here being all extra vulnerable and uncomfortable is because i want you to to get the permission to own your story so <clears throat> I really want to help sons and daughters heal from this. So I, um, I have created a program, a healing program to help sons and daughters overcome their mother wound. I, it has taken me years to overcome this, you know, uh, therapy, deliverance sessions. I'm talking about travailing, not and up and out, like the whole thing, y'all. Like it has been a, whew, it's been a long journey. It's also been an expensive journey. Therapy ain't cheap. And I'm going forever. Y'all know me. I'm going forever, like, root for therapy. Jesus in therapy. Find you a therapist, fam. Find you a therapist. But going through something like this, um, it's time consuming. But I want to shorten that time for you. And it's expensive, but I want to shorten. I want to, like, reduce that cost for you. So 
I've created a six week online program for healing mother wounds. And I want to um, create a safe, sacred community of people like you and me who are bold and courageous, um, brave enough to stand in our truth and find the healing that God has so graciously and freely given to us. Like healing is already ours. We just gotta go get it. So I want you to come along with me and heal. Find your healing, bruh. Find your healing, sis. It'll be a private Facebook community. And um, each week, we'll deep dive into like what healing really looks like. And we'll go over like, you know, um, identifying what the mother wound is and, and dealing with our perspectives and, and forgiveness and grieving and um, implementing boundaries in all relationships. And how do you honor your mother in the middle of healing? How do you honor your mother who may you, you may deem as abusive or you may deem as, you know, someone who's, who has neglected you. How do you honor someone like that? Um, and then managing expectations. So, this six-week course will take my journey, condense it, and give you all that I have learned, all that I've walked through. Um, I want to help you avoid the, um, the, mis <laughs> the mistakes I made, um, some of the pain I endured on the journey that probably wasn't um, necessary. I want you to avoid all that and like get straight to the good part, and that is healing and wholeness. Um, I feel like you know, if you do that, if you find yourself saying like, you know what, I relate to this and I want to, you know, pursue healing and you do it on your own, that's fine. You know, go read a bunch of books and, you know, pray and fast and, you know, go to therapy every week, you know, <clears throat> but if you find yourself in therapy every week, you're paying a good hundred bucks a week. So a six week program, easily over 600 bucks, you know, just, and that's just therapy alone. Okay. That's just therapy alone. Y'all know I room for therapy though. I'm just saying it, it, it's costly. What I, what I want to do for you, though, is give you this six-week program where you'll have a sacred, safe community um, of people who are going to push you and encourage you and root for you and be a cheerleader. A place where you can share your stories, where you will have my full transparency. We're going to, like, really, 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 really deep dive. You know, it'll be 10 times more transparent than this. And um, I'll have, like, exclusive digital content for you. I've created this e this is like not an e-book, like an e-journal, like an e-workbook journal type of thing. It's really cute and cool. For you to work through each of the weeks um and <clears throat> and yeah i think it'll be really, really good so it's going to